Okay, hi guys, welcome back to Sweet Talk. Oh my god, it's about 100 degrees in LA right now and my power keeps going out. I feel like I'm on a timer right now because it turns off every 30 minutes maybe. So let's see how much we can talk about before it happens again. And I have all these little bits of equipment that need to be charged at the camera and the microphone and the light and everything. And each time the power goes out, something runs out of battery and then I have to forensically charge the thing when the power comes back on. Oh my God, it's been a mess. I've tried to sit here like 10 times to do this, but let's see if we can get through it today. But yeah, I just went outside. That's why I look very shiny. It is, I think 10 p.m. and it's like so hot outside, so hot. Is someone calling me now? I'll call, I'll call them back. Um, stop ringing, oh my God, please. So I got back from the airport this morning and I was having a shower. Suddenly I noticed all of the lights in the bathroom go off and I'm like, oh, maybe like a, f a switch was flipped. Sometimes when someone's hoovering or something in the house, it gets overloaded and turns itself off. So I was like, okay, it's probably just that. So I went to every switch box that there is in the house, switched every single one, nothing worked. So I had to call the Department of Water and they had to come over here, took them six hours, apparently there's all these outages happening. And then they came over with all their equipment, all their tools, and he literally just like switched a different switch and everything turned back on. And I was like, oh my God, I am so, so sorry uh, that you came all the way out here for obviously nothing, I'm just an idiot. And he was like, no, no, it's fine. Like. Sometimes it's a bit tricky on the switch. And I was like, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry that you had to come this way. But it was fine. There was like all these outages around my house as well. But I felt like an idiot at that point. He li he literally like winked at me, but in a, in a way where someone would wink at you being like, it's okay, like, don't worry about it. Oh God, I was so embarrassed. But then they left and I was like, all right, crisis is averted, everything's fine. And I'm sitting here, it suddenly gets dark and suddenly all the lights turn off and everything turns off and I'm like, oh my God, I have to do it again. And also when he was here, I wasn't really listening to him when he told me like how to fix it. So I was like, oh fuck, I have to go and like try and figure this out and I don't have the brain for those kinds of things. And I figured, I did figure it out in the end. And now it just keeps, oh, now it just keeps turning off every, um, every like 30 minutes the power goes out, so. I'm scared that it's gonna happen again. Also, it's pitch black now and my neighborhood doesn't have a lot of houses in it. So it's completely pitch black outside. And also my phone is not charged and I had to use this Instagram light to find my way into the garden to try and fix everything. Anyway, that's what I've been dealing with today. Also, as you can imagine, it's extremely hot in the house and there's no AC if there's no power. So yeah, that's been great. But anyway, I was getting quite a lot of comments on my getting sober in my 20s video. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about that, that kind of area. I have a lot of experience in it, so I love to talk about it. I guess what I kind of wanted to focus on today was like how na to navigate sobriety in your 20s because I know it's so difficult. Our whole world is literally based around alcohol. Anything you do, anywhere you go is literally like Alcohol is like put on the pedestal of entertainment for anything. Going to the movies has even become like a drinking experience. But something I was told in AA is that you cannot live in an alcohol free world. It just doesn't exist. So you have to learn how to live amongst people who do drink, which can be really, really difficult. I found it super difficult in the beginning. Every time I saw someone drinking, I was like, I'm so jealous, I wanna drink just like them. This is not fair. And it kind of made me isolate myself slightly in the beginning, just because I did not know how to handle it. I guess my first thing that jumps out at me when I think of what helps me stay sober in such a drink heavy world is having other sober, sober people around me. That is like a game changer. I don't think I would still be sober if I didn't have sober friends. Having someone there who like understands how you're feeling when someone's pouring a glass of wine or something in front of you is essential, essential. Cause you need someone to turn around and be like, I don't feel comfortable here. If you say that to someone who drinks, like they don't quite get it. And they don't really get the severity of your feelings in that, in that, fi in that moment, which is completely fine. Like, they don't need to, but it is really important to 
have someone who totally gets it that you can speak to even if they're not there and you can just call them on the phone like that is great as well but I'm always told whenever I'm feeling a little bit anxious a little bit wobbly around alcohol the best thing to do is call a sober companion and just talk it out and everything will be fine. So that is the main thing that I would say. In the beginning of my sobriety, I asked a lot of people to come to events with me who didn't drink as well, so I felt a little bit more comfortable. The second thing I do is I love to find alcohol-free alternatives. Alcohol-free mocktail. I went for Mexican food with my friends the other night. We got spicy margaritas, virgin spicy margaritas. I think just like so much of alcoholism sometimes is just like having to do having something to do with your hands because alcoholics are just anxious people and we get very awkward very nervous in social settings I know I do and so having something in your hands is kind of a game changer as well I went so long with like just drinking water and I didn't like that people just noticed that I was drinking water all these people were like oh, do you want a drink? Do you want this? And it was just like so annoying to have to keep being like, no, I don't want a drink. I don't want anything. So the way I kind of like navigate that is just by having some sort of like fancy looking drink in my hand and then people don't say shit. I personally, if someone keeps telling me, oh, have a drink, have a shot, have a drink or something, I personally have no problem saying I'm literally an alcoholic. If I drink that, you are not going to like me. Like, I just say that. But that's just me. So I don't know. Everyone's a little bit different. Most people don't really want to say that to people, especially strangers. But I personally have no problem with it. I'll just say it to you, especially if you're annoying me. I have been to so many parties where people actually go to the point of like bothering me about it. And I hate that. I'm like, please just stop. I'm an alcoholic. If you do this, if you make me do this, you're gonna regret it. I swear to God, you are not gonna like me. I'm not gonna like you. Something is gonna go horribly wrong. Just stop, just stop, okay? I always find like having like an alcohol-free alternative is really fun. I kind of like energy drinks, honestly. People can tell you're not drinking alcohol if you're drinking those, but I've gotten to the point in my sobriety where I really couldn't care less if people notice that I'm not drinking alcohol and trust me, people mention it all the time. Even people who are my friends who I've known, not my friends, but even people who I've known forever, but maybe just see when I go out, always forget, they never remember. I always have to say, I don't drink, I don't, I don't drink, I don't drink, you know? Um, and that can get really annoying, but it's also something you kind of get used to. And honestly, it's like not really that big of a deal in the end, but it is, irritating especially especially when you're newly sober and you want a drink like you want to say yes it's like one of the hardest things to be like no I'm good thank you like it's one of the hardest things to do of course you want to say yes but you're fighting everything inside of you to say no so the more people that ask you the harder it is so I always say pick up a fancy drink alcohol free people ask you way less questions way less questions yeah but I really like energy drinks. I'm like a Red Bull enthusiast. And I think that started when I got sober. I don't think I ever drank energy drinks before I got sober. But when I moved to LA, all the girls I met, all my friends, they all had like three cans of Red Bull on hand at all times. And I definitely caught that bug, caught that energy drink bug for sure. Yeah, I would say that's one thing. One problem with like the hands thing, needing something to do with your hands is it leads me to smoke too many cigarettes sometimes or it leads me to vape way too much which I am trying to work on that is something I want to talk about with you guys another time but trying to stop vaping is like literally one of the hardest things I've had to do and I have had to stop doing cocaine so that is yeah vaping is probably one of the hardest things I've ever ever had to quit but I'm trying we're going to talk about that later that's completely different a whole different uh, kettle of fish or whatever oh you are joking me all the lights just went out Oh my god okay you know what we're just gonna keep filming i don't really care at all i can't believe that's happened again i don't want to go back outside it's actually really scary <laughs> what was i saying fuck this is when the boogeymen come out okay why am i scaring myself why am i scaring myself when i'm sitting here okay it's fine anyway oh no okay anyway yeah vaping horrible habit trying to stop really 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 hard but i will say that i definitely still notice that I have to do something with my hands. I'm still a very awkward person in social situations. If someone offers me a cigarette, I usually take it because I just need to like be doing something. Otherwise I'm on my phone, you know, or 
yeah, not being social and I don't like that. So I need to figure out a way to navigate that. So I'm not constantly smoking cigarettes and vapes, but I'm also like not just sitting on my phone because I hate when I do that. Yeah, but the fancy drinks, the fancy drinks are a good idea. I think in your 20s also, it's like, especially in America, a lot of people start drinking when they're 21. I started drinking personally when I was like 14 years old. I grew up in England. People started drinking really, really early back then. I mean, back then back at home. Um, so I had been drinking already when I got sober for nine years. I'd already been drinking for nine years. That's crazy. Maybe eight years. But anyway, so I kind of feel like I had done the drinking, kind of. That didn't make it any easier to stop though. But I think getting sober in your 20s is really, really hard because a lot of young people are just sort of discovering party life and just discovering alcohol and just dis discovering going out. A lot of people start college. Uh, a lot of people just like wait till 21 to have their first drink. And so it all becomes like this kind of exciting thing that you feel like you can't be a part of if you find yourself in a position that you have to be sober in. Um, and I definitely felt that even if I, even though I'd been drinking since I was like 14, I definitely felt left out all the time. Um, I would look at girls and I would be so jealous of them because they could drink and I couldn't and they were having so much fun. They were going into bathrooms with people as like a little gang doing, you know, whatever. And like, I couldn't go. Um, and I felt really left out. I felt horrible. Um, something that helps me with that so much is playing the tape over, playing the tape till the end because that is what is gonna make you be like, you know what, I'm so good. Um, if I ever find myself in a moment where I'm really feeling envious of people around me and I'm like, oh God, I hate myself. Why did I have to ruin it for myself? Why am I like this? I wish I could just drink with these people, do drugs with these people. I wish I could do all this stuff. Um, and I feel maybe like I'm a little bit like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna do it. I don't even care. When I feel that way, and I'll tell you, I feel that way quite a lot. When I feel that way, I sit for a second and I say, okay, let's say you have that drink or let's say you smoke that weed or whatever. What are you gonna do next? You're gonna have another drink probably. And then what are you gonna do next? Probably another drink or something else a little stronger. And I know from personal experience how that tape ends. It ends horribly. It ends in crisis, catastrophe, uh, it ends in burning bridges, and it ends in me being very depressed, very anxious, and just really not loving life. And if I just sit there and just think about that for like two minutes even, that will honestly make me stop wanting to drink. I will almost immediately get over the feeling of envy, and I'll kind of just be like, you know what, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Um, Hear something outside. Oh God. Okay, no. So that's another thing I do. I just play the tape over and I'm like, I don't really want to do this. Uh, and uh, I can also just tell you every time I feel that way, but then I go home and I'm at home in my bathroom and I can wash my face and I can do my skincare, maybe have a shower, maybe get something to eat, get, get to bed at a reasonable hour, maybe watch a movie. Like when I get back home and I get to do those things, which when I was drinking, I would never do. When I was drinking, I would pass out with my clothes on, with my makeup on at 5 a.m., completely like confused. Maybe even at someone else's house, I wouldn't even end up at home. So to be able to go home and have that time after a night out is like incredible to me. And if the playing the tape over doesn't really help me, I can just remember when you get home, like you felt this way before, you know you have. And when you get home, you are so relieved that you didn't dr drink or you didn't do those drugs. Like you are so relieved and you know that. So just remember that. Just remember that feeling when you go home and you can just tie your hair up, wash your face, put your lovely moisturizers on, put an episode of Peep Show on and just like fall asleep happy. Remember that feeling. Honestly, sometimes that just like wipes those cravings away from me for like enough time I need to leave, you know? I think also another really, really important thing, when I was drinking and using, I would be the last one at the party every time. I would even be the one that was trying to make the party continue when everyone else had given up. I would always be the last one there. And when I got sober and I was like, oh, I feel 
like I can't stay out as late, I kind of feel like I'm going home, like I don't feel a bit like a loser, like everyone's staying out till like the morning and like getting wasted and whatever. And someone was like, you don't want to be the last one at the party, like you don't, like if anything, you want to be the first one to leave. You want to be the last one to get there and the first one to leave because trust me, you aren't missing anything and you kind of want people to miss you as opposed to people being like, Jesus Christ, we need to get this girl out of our house immediately, which I've had the experience of many, many times. I know people have been like, this girl's insane. Like she has to go home. Like this can't be happening anymore. So just kind of remember, like, it's very demure to leave early, get people, like, guessing about you, to be a girl of mystery, you know? It's very lovely. It's very lovely to know you're going home and people are like, where did she go? Instead of being, like, sloshed on the floor, asking people to buy you more drugs, like, um, I can assure you it's a much better look. It's a much better look. Um, I can also tell you all the people that I made friends with after 2 a.m. on aren't really my friends. I can I can assure you of that. Uh, I don't think I've ever met anyone good after 2 a.m. That's for sure. And I've met a lot of people after 2 a.m. So mm, I think also one other thing I'll say, I have a million things to say, but I'm gonna keep this one slightly short today because I'm slightly concerned that everything that I own is dying in battery and I have to go back outside and turn the switches back on, which I don't really wanna do. Uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I guess the last thing I want to say is just remember you are literally not alone. Like I have felt probably every feeling that you're feeling. If you're first getting sober, like I have felt every feeling you're feeling. I can assure you, I have been to the, I have been the lowest I've ever been as a sober person, feeling horrible, anxious, getting in arguments with people because the the world isn't going the way I want it to, feeling jealous of the girls at the party who are drinking and doing blow in the bathroom and like wanting to be them and feeling like my boyfriend is more impressed by them because they can do drugs and I'm like a mess, I'm crazy. Like I felt all of it, all of it. And uh, sobriety is not a huge thing in London. I, I hadn't really met anyone in London who was sober, but probably because I wasn't sober myself. So I don't really know how I would, you know, met those people or even started talking about that. But when I came to LA and got sober and I met all these incredible women who are who are young sober women and like fucking killing it at life, I was like, oh shit, I'm not by myself. Like I'm not the only one that feels this way. This is incredible. So just remembering that you are not the only one and there's always gonna be someone you can reach out to always DM me if you're at a party and you're feeling one of these feelings, DM anyone, DM any sober person and just know that you can always take five. You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, but you don't want to leave, take five, go sit in the back of the garden and just like breathe, go into the bathroom, lock the door. Those girls that are trying to do cocaine in the bathroom, they can fucking wait for you to take a moment to just chill. Just take your own time and just like understand that you can do it. You can do it. And it's like minute by minute sometimes. Sometimes it's like, I'm just not going to drink this minute. Okay, I'm not going to drink the next minute. You can do it by hour. You can do it by day. Whatever helps you, it's your sobriety. And it's important. And like, you are the most important thing. And it doesn't matter what all these other people are doing around you. Like, a lot of the people that I was jealous of for being able to drink and stuff all got sober. (laughs) So, and were calling me for advice on getting sober. So just know that like everyone doesn't have it figured out. The girls that you're jealous of don't have it figured out. No one has it figured out. And you're, you're doing amazing. And I'm here if you want to talk. And uh, just know that there are thousands of other people that feel the way you do. And all I can say is getting sober was the best thing that I've ever done. And even though I've been sober for as long as I have, like I still have wobbles. I'm still out at night, sometimes seeing girls drinking and wishing I could be them. Like I still have that. That is not something that I've just magically wished away. I tr- like, trust me, I still have all those feelings. But yeah, there are just like small little coping, mechaniz- coping mechanisms you can do in order to make life just easier, you know? Because life is always gonna be a little bit tricky, sober or not sober, there are gonna be bumps in the road and just being able to navigate them is all you have to do, you know? You don't have to figure everything out. You just gotta be like, okay, how do I get through this part, you know? Um, But yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about this. I 
feel so happy that I got people opening up in the comments and DMing me on my last video about getting sober in my 20s. I think it's so magical that this like disease wants to break everyone apart and like ruin everything, <laughs> but it can actually bring people together in such a magical way. I just love that. Um, so I will talk, I will talk about this topic. I will talk on this topic for as many times as you guys want me to. Um, but I just wanted to like talk a little bit about what I do to try and remain calm as a 20 something sober person, because it can be really, really tricky. Um, I have all these other tips, all these other tricks, all these other things I do, and I'll talk about them for days. Um, currently I'm concerned that my power is gonna not be on for the rest of the night and I'm getting spooked in my house by myself. Um, but oh God, I have to go figure that out now. But anyway, I really, really love you guys. I'm so happy I got to finally do this for a second. It was honestly such a mission <laughs> trying to get everything charged and then that p power going out. Oh my God. Okay. And as you saw, the power just went out again. So I have to go do that. I love you guys so much and I'm loving this podcast. I'm just loving talking to you guys. It's so much fun. Okay. Hi guys. My camera died. So I just really quickly went to turn on the lights, but I just want to say I love you so much and I will see you next time. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have subscribed, make sure you subscribe. It's super helpful to me and you can see every time I post, but yeah, anyway, I love you guys and I will see you next time. Love you. Bye.